Today we are going to see how to set up AWS Elastic Load Balancer, especially how to set up the classic load balancer that Amazon provides. We will need a multi-available VPC, which is spreading across multiple availability zones with public private subnets and subnets for Elastic Load Balancers and security groups. We will need web servers, at least two of them in two different availability zones and then a load balancer. So we'll start with setting up the VPC first. I'm going to set up the VPC as shown in this diagram here. We are going to choose the AP South region that is as shown here. And then AP South region has two availability zones, one A and one B. And then we are going to set up a public subnet, private subnet in availability zone one A and likewise another public and private subnet in one B. There is going to be a public security group for the instances, private security group for the instances, and also another security group specifically for our elastic load balancers. Uh, this is the URL that I'm going to use that you can see at the top of this window. I will add it to the information page so you can follow it. And it also has the script uh, that is necessary for creating an uh, multi availability zone uh, spreading uh, VPC. If you need any assistance, you can run this uh, script or if you can set it up yourself, it's well and great. I have already set it up in my account. If I go to my VPC, uh, I already have uh, a VPC set up. As you can see here, uh, this is my VPC and already it is tagged and ready for usage. And I also have the subnets set up here. Uh, you can see here there are six subnets that is uh, private, public, and then spare. And then if I just uh, choose only the one availability zone for our review purpose, AZ1, and you can see here that is the public, private, and spare all are set up. And then if I go to my security group, I again have my public security group. If I select this, my public security group is designed to receive traffic on port 80 and only from this security group. And this security group is nothing but my load balancer security group. As you can see here, the security group 7BE9 uh, has been mentioned as my as an ELB security group, whereas if I go to my ELB, it can receive traffic from all over the internet on port 80 and from all the IP ranges. So now that my multi availability zone spreading VPC is ready, I'm going to start my instances now. For this, I'm going to start with uh, Amazon Linux because Amazon Linux comes pre installed with the AWS. Uh, binaries and I will need that for copying some packages or some files from my S3 bucket. I'm going to set up a simple HTTPD web server and for that web server, I'll create an image and then a static website inside the HTTP server. So here we are in the important section where we are going to choose our VPC here and then inside our VPC, we are need to be ensure that we are going to choose our public subnet. So the first server is going to go into the AZ1 public subnet. So I have chosen the uh, Galaxy ELB demo AZ1 public subnet and I don't need a public IP address because everything is going to happen through an IAM role and that IAM role and uh, I'm going to bootstrap it with my commands in the advanced field here. I'm just going to put in the commands that is necessary to copy the uh, files from my S3 bucket and install the HTTP packages and everything here. So I've just finished typing the commands here. So as you can see here, there's a bin bash m install httpd uh, service start httpd started on boot and uh, copy some uh, files from my bucket. And then I'm just writing one line so that we can see the host name of the server from which the pages are being served. So let us click on add storage. There is nothing much to do that. Let's click on next. And I'm going to add a tag here, which is going to say this is a Galaxy. ELB demo web node from 0, 01 and it is on one availability zone 1A. So for an easy reference, we'll have it 1A there. Click on security group and here I'm going to select my public security group. Select the public one and then click on next and review. And then it says uh, you will, if you will not be able to connect to the server, blah, 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 that is fine with me. So click on continue and then click on launch. I'm going to acknowledge my, my key and then click on launch. I need one more instance. So I'm going to launch one more like this. So I'm just going to choose launch more like this. 
and then I'm just going to change my instance details so that I can put it into my AZ2 public subnet. Just going to look for that. Here it is, AZ2 public subnet. I'm just going to ensure whether my advanced configuration details are there. Just they are there, and then click on Add Storage, and then Tags. This is another place where I want to change. That is going to be one B. So click on Next, Configure Security Group and then ensure that public security group is chosen click on review click on continue click on launch now with this step we have configured our vpcs and we have also configured our uh, web servers also i'm just going to search for uh, galaxy elb demo and then web node I'm just going to search for that so that we will see the two servers here 1a and 1b are running in availability zones 1a and 1b now this step is set so next step is to set up our load balancer so i'm just going to clean up this tabs here and for load balancers if you scroll down on your ec2 dashboard a little bit you can see the load balancers here click on that and click on the create load balancer and as i said we are going to start a classic load balancer click on continue and then name it as galaxy elb and then choose our vpc and then leave the configuration protocol on the port as the same for subnets remember we need to put it into a public one so i'm just going to see carefully choose the ac1 public subnet and then ac2 public subnet review it at the bottom both are public click on assign security group and ensure that we are putting it into the elb security group or not at the default one and then click on configure remember we are not using any ssl or https so Amazon gives a friendly advice uh, to say that to secure your server, use HTTP as an SSL. For our demo, we don't need that. So click on continue to next and then leave the ports as it is and the protocol as it is. And uh, we don't want to wait 30 seconds. We'll just say that uh, check my server for every seven seconds and mark it as healthy if it is going to be coming back in responses in 35 seconds. That is seven, five responses of healthy uh, threshold and then the server will be marked as in service we'll see what is this in service out of service so later we'll just click on next add the two servers which is already in my vpc at amazon automatically picks up those instances that is running inside those vpcs and listed here and you can choose whatever you want check it here and then enable the cross -zone, cross zone load balancing so that traffic will be distributed equally across both these uh, servers and leave it as it is the default the timeout that is it starts draining the idle connections after 300 seconds leave it as default click on add tags and i'm going to add a tag here which says well let's see elb demo click on review on create and click on create and it takes a while to create so you can see here the server uh, that all the details are here and then the instances are currently out of service if i move my mouse here it says instance registration is still in progress uh, meanwhile we just go ahead and see what are the other tabs uh, this is the main tab where the dns for my load balancer is mentioned we'll just copy that and put it to a browser now and it is still the instance registration is in progress it won't work but I let it run uh, meanwhile we'll just look at the other fields now so instance registration is still happening and health checks this is the thing we already saw about how often we want to check and how many checks has to be succeed before it is marked as healthy and listeners is what port i'm listening what protocol i'm listening under monitoring you see unhealthy host count is going from two to zero and then it is increasing so it just keeps on checking the server and then it tries to find out what is a healthy host count and all those things and this tagging we know that what is already going to be there so the Registration process uh, takes about a minute or so. So while we wait there, we just checked out other things. I'm just going to give it a minute before we check the URL to see everything is working online and fine. So you can see that the registration is uh, still happening. So I'm just going to wait for a minute. Now it has been a while. Now you can see that uh, both the servers have come online and uh, both of them are in service. So let's go ahead and uh, put it in our browser window and see what happens to the url i'm just going to copy that url again and i'm just going to put it into my browser now i'm just going to paste it here and then go ahead there we go 
this is the URL that uh, the static website that we have set up and you can see the IP address of the server here 10.250.0 uh, and if I re go ahead and re hit refresh we will most probably see the traffic around Robin and send to the other server also mm -hmm. so there we go you can see here it is sent to 240.1 and uh, if uh, depending upon the traffic and depending upon the workload on the server the ELB will keep on balancing the load between the two different uh, servers that is available behind it so that is how you set up a classic load balancer if you have any questions leave it in the comment section I'll follow it up and answer in the next video we will set up how to create an auto scaling group and then put a load balancer in front of the auto scaling group thank you very much for watching subscribe it if you like it comment and like it thank you